Good morning. Good morning and welcome. I take great pleasure in hosting this historic occasion, the official opening ceremony of the new acute care wing, paving the way for when our doors open to the public on Sunday, September 14th. First, I'd like to formally acknowledge His, ex His Excellency, the Governor, Mr. George Ferguson, and our guest on stage, the Premier of Bermuda, the Honorable Michael Dunkley, the Minister for Health and Seniors and Environment, the Honorable Jean Atherton, JP, MP, Bermuda Hospitals Board Chairman, Mr. Jonathan Bruin, the Chairman of Paget Health Services, President of BCM McAlpine, Mr. Alan Berlin. To my right, Chief of Staff, Dr. Michael Weidekamp. Chief of Nursing Quality and Risk, Ms. Judy Richardson. The Chairman of the Bermuda Hospitals Charitable Trust, Mr. Philip Waterfield. I would also like to acknowledge all of you, members of Parliament, our invited guests, some of you who have traveled from overseas to attend this special event. Protocol is now established. This new facility we are officially cutting the ribbon for today is for our community. It represents the work of countless individuals, from people outside of BHB, including construction workers, international and local advisors, board members, past and present, civil servants, ministers, and premiers, to a multitude of employees, both Bermudian and from overseas. Special mention also has to be made to recognize and to thank our neighbors who have lived with Bermuda's largest construction project on their doorstep for the last four years. The project was officially launched almost six years ago. It has touched every single department across BHB, clinical and support areas, and almost every part of government. Most staff members who contributed to the project are still here, but some have moved on and others have passed away. I would like to recognize them for their tireless hard work and dedication. We also must not forget that this is the site of our very first community hospital, which opened in 1920. Quite simply, we would not be here if it wasn't for the work of those original healthcare pioneers, such as Dr. Harvey and those first nurses, orderlies, and support workers. Every step they took and every step that has been taken through 94 years since then has moved us forward through multiple transformations. There have been numerous construction projects, new technologies and treatments have been added, and BHB has adapted to an array of social changes. It all plays out in the history of our hospital. So I challenge you to see that today is not only about a beautiful new building, it is the continuation of a story of caring for our community. Already, this new acute care wing is wrapped in legacy and filled with history. This is why it makes me proud to have five official ribbon cutters today to reflect this continuity. First is our most senior and experienced physician, Dr. Eugene Otterbridge, who is not only our chief of pediatrics, but had three aunts who were nurses in Bermuda two of whom were matrons at our hospital. Three of the ribbon cutters today represent our newest employees. They have just returned to BHB, and all of them were BHB scholarship recipients. 26-year-old Shandell Doors, 23-year-old Donay Richards, and 25-year-old Lakeisha Wolf represent the next generation of caregivers. 
from diagnostic imaging, nursing, and social work. And finally, we have a candy striper, 17-year-old Zarin Bennett, who is an outstanding candy striper and gifted musician. He's planning to study either obstetrics or pediatrics. So Dr. Otterbridge will know exactly who to hand over it to. A surprising number of our staff and Bermuda's health professionals start off as BHB candy stripers or student volunteers. So thank you to the hospital's auxiliary of Bermuda and BHB's own organizational development department who oversee these programs to ensure a steady pipeline of healthcare workers for our community. In keeping with our time-honored tradition, I would like to invite the Anglican Bishop of Bermuda, the Right Reverend Nicholas Dill, to bless our new acute care wing and all those who will serve our community from within its walls. Bishop Dill. Your Excellency, Mr. Premier, all of us today, this is a tremendous privilege to be here and to help us to thank uh, all those who've been a part of this project, but also to acknowledge and thank uh, God uh, for the energy and the dedication that he's given to so many uh, to pray that this, sim this uh, center would be a symbol of our community health, uh, where all peoples of all races, backgrounds, ages, and situations might find hope and experience care and dignity and to be restored back into their community. So I want to invite you to bow your heads uh, and if praying is what you normally do, please join with me and if it's not what you normally do, please just feel free to sit and think uh, of all that's gone on to make this uh, extraordinary thing happen. Let us pray. Gracious God, in a world which is so often marred by brokenness, by fear, accident and disease, scarred so often by our own weakness and failure. We want to come to you today to thank you for this place. Thank you for the vision and the ability to build this acute care center at the heart of our community. Thank you for all that labored to make it happen. Thank you for all that it will bring to our island home. We pray now for your blessing on all who will work here, the administrators, the medical teams, support staff, researchers, technical staff, volunteers. We ask that you would give each one a sense of purpose, wisdom, compassion, care, and ability to minister to those in any kind of need. Grant to them courage, insight, humility, decisiveness, and unity. May the spirit of healing and encouragement rest upon them. We pray also seeking your blessing on all who will use this facility. We ask that fear be replaced with hope, disease with healing, weakness with strength, pain with relief, sadness with joy, brokenness with wholeness. We pray that families and friends may know the blessings of peace. We thank you that you are the great physician, a God of compassion and mercy, a God of the present and the future, a God of resurrection and new beginnings. And now as we've gathered here this morning to open this facility, fill us with joy and expectation for all that lies ahead. Continue to provide the finances and the personnel to ensure the future of this facility and the ability to fulfill its mandate. We ask that you would continue to guide, lead and inspire those who will make decisions for its future and those who will implement them. May you continue to bless us through the provision of this resource amongst the many others in our community that are dedicated to service, care, and healing until that day of perfect restoration and wholeness in your presence. We pray these prayers for the good of your people, in your compassion and mercy, and in the name of the Prince of Peace, the healer of bodies and souls, Praying now for his blessing. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you, uh, Bishop Dill. We'll now have our Premier, Minister, uh, Premier Dunkley. Thank you, Vanetta, and protocol haven't been established. Good morning, everyone, on what couldn't be a more beautiful day. 
We are indeed blessed to live here. As I had the opportunity to um, appreciate the words of comfort and encouragement from Bishop Dill, I started to reflect on just how blessed we are to live in Bermuda. And then I started to realize that I'm getting a bit old because this is the third hospital I recall. I remember as a little child being driven into the ambulance bay at the hospital that used to be next door. And then I started to reflect, wait a second, I'm not getting old, I'm just getting experienced. So. It is indeed a pleasure to be here today as a Premier of Bermuda and to have the opportunity to take part in a wonderful ceremony. One of the most important missions of the Bermuda government is to make sure that Bermudians have access to the very best possible health care and to make sure our health systems meet the needs of our people as they arise. And today marks a very important milestone in the fulfillment of that mission. The opening of the new acute care wing this morning will provide Bermudians for generations to come access to a facility that supports the most modern technology and upholds the highest standards of medical care. This is a project that has been years in the making. It has taken a deep commitment and skills of a great many people to see it through to completion. And so I'd like to take this opportunity to thank the many people who have been involved in this project. To government ministers, former and current, and civil servants, thank you. To members of the Bermuda Hospital Board and the administrative staff, thank you. To the architects and the project managers, thank you. To the hundreds of construction workers for your detail and your commitment, thank you. To the medical practitioners and the hospital staff, thank you. Everyone who has worked on this project has contributed to the future well-being of our island home. Thank you from the bottom of our heart. And of course, to the clinical and support staff who have trained in the latest processes and standards to make this facility work for the people who need assistance and care, you represent the best of what Bermuda has to offer. Thank you and good luck going forward. And finally, to the Bermuda Hospital Charitable Trust and the hundreds of donors who have made a deep commitment to make this work, thank you. There's been no doubt that this has been a very complex project running for many different disciplines and it's created something that is indeed a benefit to the whole of Bermuda, to our community and to the visitors who come to our shores. I believe and I contend here today that it stands as an example of how Bermudians can come together and work together to move our island home forward. Each and every one involved should be proud of the work that they have undertaken and completed. This is clearly a very good day for the people of Bermuda because we have built something that we should be proud of. We have built something very special. We have built it together for the benefit of each other and it represents a genuine community effort. This is our hospital. It is here for all of us to use, for our loved ones, for family, for friends, and the community, and it was made possible by the many fine and dedicated people who knuckled down to the task and made it happen. So on behalf of the government and the people of Bermuda, I thank you for your good work. In closing, it is up to all of us, all of us on the island to make this work. We must maintain the physical plant going forward well into the future. We must keep the standards of care at the highest level in this hospital, and we must ensure that the facility is financially sustainable at all times. That's a deep commitment, but I know as Bermudians we're up to the task. And one final thing that I will say, I will get on the horse that the former Minister of Health rode quite often. It's up to us to prevent coming to this place. It's at the highest standards of health care available, but we can all do a better job of taking care of our health and making our lives healthier and happier and making health care more sustainable in Bermuda. Thank you. Enjoy the opening. I'm blessed to be here. Thank you. Thank you, Premier Dunkley, for that message of working together. Minister Abner. Thank you, Mrs. Simons protocol having been established. I am both proud and excited that we are here today 
so close to seeing the first patients coming through the doors of the new acute care wing. When the emergency department, just to my left, opens at exactly one minute past midnight on Sunday morning, a new era of health care begins for Bermuda. A long time ago, I came to this hospital as director of finance and came face to face with the realization that as the only hospital in Bermuda, KEMH played a significant role in the provision of health care services for the community. Back then, my focus was on helping to keep costs down while ensuring new services when introduced were supported by need and appropriately resourced. Now, as the new Minister of Health and a former member of the Bermuda Hospitals Board and former chair of the Bermuda Health Council, my focus is still on the delivery of quality health services for the island. And thus, I fully recognize the importance of this new facility to Bermuda health, Bermuda's health care system. We should all be proud that we have this first class facility to care for our dialysis patients, our cancer patients, those who need emergency and often life-saving care, those who require MRIs, CTs, or X-rays to find out what's wrong, and those who are acutely sick or recovering from surgery. I am sure that a former health minister, the late Nelson Boscom, who was in fact the minister who started the process that brings us here today, would be especially proud. The public tours that took place late last month saw over 700 people excited and positive about the quality of care they will be able to receive on island, thanks to the much improved equipment and workspace. I'm also very aware that intensive training has taken place across clinical and support departments so that the standard of care is consistent with the quality of the new wing. Be proud, Bermuda, be proud, but please also remember that your priority should be to avoid needing these services. Your GP should always be your first port of call if you're unwell, unless it is an emergency. The emergency department is built to accommodate those who are in critical need of care. It is not a replacement for your GP who knows you best and who can best refer you through the healthcare system if needed. Equally, as the Minister of Health, I need to encourage you to please make good choices. If you can avoid hypertension and diabetes through healthy living choices, you can avoid dialysis, you can avoid amputations, and an increased risk of heart attack or stroke. The new acute care wing is an important part of an overall health care system. We should be so proud that it is here if we need it. If you have an accident or major illness, you can be assured you will get the best care. However, we also want you to be well, for your life to be as long and healthy as it can be. If we look at what we can achieve in constructing an amazing facility such as this, I'm sure that as individuals and families, we have it in us to build healthy people in healthy communities. Thank you very much. Thank you, Minister Appleton. Chairman. Thank you, Minister Atherton, Premier Dunkley, Bishop Dill, Mr. Simons, and all invited guests. This indeed is a very proud moment for me. I've had a long relationship with the BHB, previous to my present tenure as chairman. I was chairman back in 2003 when Mrs. Joan Dennis Wright was the CEO. We recognized then that the existing KMH was aging and was too small for the services needed by Bermuda. Work began back then on an estate master plan. It was the document that in 2007 was reviewed by Johns Hopkins International. In November 2008, Chairman Herman Tucker, CEO David Hill, and Minister of Health, the late Nelson Bascom, used the Johns Hopkins recommendations to gain approval for a project to build a new acute care wing. Detailed specifications based on the current and future needs of Bermuda were developed, and the international community were, were invited to bid to see who would come up with the most effective design at the best value. This has been a long, intensive process, and this building is a reality due to the support of all health ministers, previous and present. The Honourable Zane de Silva, 
broke ground here with then Premier Paula Cox in January 2011. And in June 2014, Premier Dunkley and Minister Atherton were on hand when we received the keys to the building. This building is a reality due to the dedication of BHB boards, board chairmen, CEOs and the senior management team. Particular recognition must be shown to Herman Tucker, who was at the helm when the decision to build this acute care unit was made and when construction began. Their combined vision and efforts must not be forgotten. This building is a reality thanks to the many hours of hard work BHB employees spent researching and meeting to develop specifications that would best suit the needs of our Bermudian community. This building is a reality due to the efforts of our local and overseas advisors. As we all know, this building is a reality due to our partner, Paget Health Services, who contracted BCM McAlpine, who in turn subcontracted more than 100 companies, many of them Bermudian owned. We take particular pride in this area as constructing this building was a lifeline to many locals in the construction industry at a time when there was little to nothing happening. It was the largest ever construction program on the island and hundreds of locals had a hand in it. We have a 30 year relationship with Paget Health Services who remain responsible for the maintenance of the building so getting it right was vitally important. This building is reality, here it is. But even with all the efforts of everyone I've mentioned, it would not have been possible without the Bermuda Hospital's Charitable Trust. The BHCT has in its chairman, Philip Butterfield, a man of bold determination. His determination and confidence in the ability to raise $40 million to make the first payment for our new wing is the reason the project was able to get off the ground at all. And now we have it, clearly on the ground, but higher, for the entire community our new acute care wing. As chairman, I'm extremely proud of all the community collaboration this building represents, and I'm confident it will make a marked improvement in the quality and scope of health care we will be able to provide for our community come September 14th. Thank you all. Well, that ends the speeches, so thank you to everyone. Uh, we're now going to have the actual ribbon cutting, and don't run away. We're going to host a small uh, reception immediately after the ribbon cutting. Thank you. Okay, that's done. One, two.